How's it going everyone? Welcome to Hill Street. Today's story is, I fell asleep at work. That was a huge mistake. If you end up enjoying this story, please leave a like. And if you would like to hear more stories from me, please subscribe. Let me know how I'm doing in the comments. Now, let's get into this nightmare. I fell asleep at work a week ago. Usually this isn't a big deal. I work at a bio lab and the job it has a lot of downtime. I was currently tasked with a thermo experiment dealing with a new strand of the IAV virus and was attempting to study how temperature changes in the environment relate to population growth of the virus. I say new strand, but really it's the seasonal virus. I'm a virologist, but the complex I work at relates to bio research of all different kinds of organisms. As an independent research firm, we're often given tasks by a third party and are rewarded based on our findings. Often the tasks I'm given follow a similar structure. I receive a viral culture, build the culture to a certain sample size, then present environmental challenges to said culture and discover how it reacts and what kind of proteins are present in the surviving population. It sounds boring, but it isn't. I absolutely love my job. Well, I used to at least. I put my two weeks in today. I was relaxing in my office when one of my co-workers, Mary, knocked on my door. She was brand new to the job, but her warm smile was already infectious. I brought you some coffee, she said, walking in just past the brink of the door. I turned around from my computer, giving her a faint grin as I took the coffee from her hand. What are you working on? Temperature resistance of a new strand of the IAB, I said. Sounds sick, she said, winking. I admittedly gave a quick laugh, shaking my head. The culture I treated yesterday was displaying some very interesting properties. The one that survived the heating process seemed to have a different genome from the others. I've been tracking this evolutionary process, of course, but it's almost as if the virus is undergoing a radical divergent evolution. The ones that survived are developing a new protein code, and their RNA is already showing significant adjustments compared to the parent batch. This sounds exciting, she said. Want to help? I saw a light fade from her eyes, and she turned down at the floor. I actually just received a package I've been looking forward to this morning. Is that so? It's from a biopreservation company working in the Amazon. They sent a sample up that they want me to look at. She paused, and I could see the words forming in her mind before she said anything. But if you find anything cool or just want to stop by, I'm next door. You'll be the first person I see if I find anything, I assured her. We both traded a smile and she started towards the door. I turned back to the culture I was currently studying, feeling her eyes on me one last time before she left. The door closed behind me. I could feel my heart beating heavily. I sighed. This was to be a routine day. I headed to the lab, sanitized, and got into my hat suit. The chill room had four different cultures in it. The parent culture and the three subcultures who were experiencing different temperature controls. Two of the cultures were transported to a heating container. And I set the incubator to two hours. I made a mental note. Split the parent culture into a new culture and introduce a bacterial food supply for the virus. With that done, I headed back to my office, turned the lights off, and slipped away. Fifteen minutes, I told myself. It ended up being nearly two hours. I woke up with a lump in my throat, the kind that was warning of what kind of week I was looking forward to. Shit, I said with a hoarse voice, standing up from my chair. I rubbed my throat, feeling the itchiness fester. I grabbed the cough drop from my pocket, swallowed it with a cold sip of water, and sat back down. Shit, I repeated. Now, you should understand that quite contrary to public opinion, viral containment breaks happen somewhat often. Our lab doesn't deal with viruses that are highly dangerous. In fact, we're only equipped to deal with low-risk viruses. And as such, our containment protocols don't need to be extensive. In the case of a small outbreak, the protocol is to sanitize, report, sanitize again, quarantine, and finally, sanitize. I got into my hazuit and quickly returned to the lab frantically pulling the cultures I was working on out and inspecting their cases. The freezer sensor hadn't detected a leak, and the cultures had a population that lined up with their estimates. I did the same with the incubator, and again, no signs of a problem. I sighed a breath of relief. I extracted a small NRA sample for the culture. I could feel the cough drop working, but it wasn't long before the itchiness continued again. Quickly, but ensuring no more possible containment breaches would occur, I sealed the culture emailed myself the transcript of the RNA strand and sanitized everything I touched for the day until there was nothing to sanitize. 
Then I sanitized everything again. At this point, there really wasn't much to do. I told my supervisor that I was coming down with something. He wished me good luck and told me to quarantine myself until symptoms resolved themselves, and if possible, procure a culture from phlegm or any other bodily injections. I thought of the strand I had just been studying as I drove home. The one with the bizarre genome. The one with the new protein coat. I had seen it before, but that was the funny thing about viruses. No matter how often you've seen a pattern emerge, they can still surprise you. The itchiness in my throat propagated. I made soup that night, watched one of my favorite shows, and retired to my bed. I stripped down and wrapped myself in a blanket as I began to feel the itchiness turn into a painful heat. I had developed this sore throat. It was supposed to be easy. The next morning I woke with a crippling choke. The soreness had spread among my esophagus, and I could feel a sharp pain in my abdomen. I downed an Advil and spent the remainder of the day in bed watching thin dark lines of shadows reflect off the backside of my overhead fan. By the next day, I could feel a strict fever and my hands were soaked with sweat. My vision was getting blurry and my head pounded with the drum of a furious disease. I moved to the kitchen, my hands wobbling as I grabbed a bowl and a small bag of cereal. The flakes missed the bowl and I sat looking at the mess I made on the table, my shivering hand clanking the spoon against the table. I was famished, but I did not want to eat. I had never experienced a flu like this. Was I patient zero of a potentially dangerous disease? Of course not. Viruses didn't mutate like that. I've been working with the common flu. Sure, there were always variations in their genome, but the virus I had been studying was still mostly the IAV virus I had worked with for years. I knew this RNA strand, but still, the deviations I saw. The pain in my abdomen was unbearable by the next day. I could barely open my eyes as sweat drained down my face. I was a wreck and my body ached from every inch of nerve fiber. I stood looking at the bright light with weak eyes, quickly retreating to my bed before a migraine could set in. So I laid in bed, continuing to fight with an invisible intruder. I tossed and turned and contorted with right. The pain in my stomach intensified into a maddening crescendo. I told myself the next morning, I might die. The pain was so severe. My fever was flaring. My throat was intensely on fire and my abdomen was screaming. I was starving but knew no food would go down. I was thirsty but I could not drink. The illness was only waned slightly in the evening when the quiet hours of the evening were interrupted by a surprising phone call. Hello, I said, feeling the tightness in my head as the fever intensified. Are you okay? A soft voice said from the other side. I'm... I'm fine. I swung my legs over the side of my bed. The room was spinning as I slowly let the walls reorient themselves. I heard you came down with something, but I haven't heard from you, she paused, and I could feel nervousness turn to courage as she asked something I hadn't expected. Do you want me to come over? Maybe make you something? It was Mary. For this brief moment, my symptoms waned. I didn't feel anything but a slight warmth in my heart, and I was emboldened so badly to say yes. No, I coughed, laying my hand over my mouth. My hand was warm, and I pulled it back to reveal a piece of dark phlegm. My eyes lightened up in discomfort as I realized I've coughed up blood. I don't want you to catch whatever I have. She paused, and I could sense the worry in her voice when she broke the silence. Did you get contaminated? I shook my head, the floor beginning to dizzy. I grabbed the crusted towel by my side, slinging it on my shoulder as I moved to the bathroom door slowly. I work with a flu virus. It's not serious. I want you to get better, she said. I slammed myself against the counter, looking sharply into the mirror. Yellow eyes looked back at me, and my skin was pale. My lips looked dry red, as if I had been brought up from the dead. I'll be okay, I quivered. She sighed, and for a minute we stood silently on opposite ends of the phone. I was holding back violent coughs as I could hear her ease into a new conversation. Is it okay if I ask you a question? Go ahead, I said, my head throbbing. I could feel something in my stomach, the pain in my abdomen growing intensely as I turned my face to the sink. Something wanted to come up. I turned the faucet on, dipping a washcloth into the frigid water. Were you in my office on Monday? I shakily turned the water off, gripping the edge of the sink as my legs began to weaken. No, w why? I asked with a fragile voice. Well, one of the specimens I received from the Amazon went missing, and I was trying to see if maybe you knew where it went. Specimen? I looked into the mirror. 
I looked half dead already. The feeling in my stomach was beginning to lurch. I was about to give in. It was a never before discovered species, a spider. My eyes bulged as something in my throat popped. I didn't have time. I dropped the phone as my hands grabbed the sink and I lurched into the bowl. I opened my mouth and a wave of fluid immediately left my throat. Vomit flooded out of my mouth and into the sink. And after what felt like an hour, I pulled myself up, wiping edges of my mouth quickly with uncooperative hands. Hello? My eyes went down to the mess I had made. I could feel my tired heart accelerate violently as I took in what was in front of me. The fluid in front of me was alive. The sink bowl was bloody and the bottom lined with small chunks of flesh. From this mess, I could see movement. Hundreds of tiny hairy legs scurried around in my sink. I could feel my stomach knot as I watched. They were bright red, their tiny legs scraping what I'd given up, their small mouths feeding off what I've now stained the sink with. I'd thrown up a colony of spiders. And then I felt the legs in my throat, felt the movement in my stomach. I screamed, but this only invited another round. This time more fierce as a dark liquid came out, bringing along another wave of crawlers. There were unhatched eggs in this one, but mainly more that were struggling against the bloody barrage that painted my bathroom counter. I slipped back, falling against the floor, wiping my mouth as more arachnid emerged from my mouth. My voice was dry, and my scream turned into a petrified cry as I could feel warm blood dripping down my chin into my bare chest. A hundred fleeing spiders crawled away into the dark recess of my home, out the window and down the drains. I brought my legs to my chest, swatting at whatever walked past me, my body lurching and violently shaking as a third wave tried to surface. I could feel my bowels contort and twist as I kept my mouth shut, a flurry of tiny feet scurrying past my lips. Tears scored down my face as I spat into the toilet, the drops from my eyes wishing the nightmare away. I woke the next morning in a bloody bathroom. The sink was covered in dry, dark red chunks. The toilet bowl was the color of dusk. The tile was littered with trail marks of red and the slain bodies of tiny spiders. The unhatched eggs that had emerged were still in good condition. I destroyed them with my boot. Beyond me, the room was devoid of light. I stood, my strength returning, and I turned on the shower as I quietly sobbed. My aching body destroyed as I weeped against the wall. I recovered over the course of that day. I ate, I sanitized, I drank, sanitized again, and spent the next five hours re-sanitizing everything I touched. I didn't say anything to anyone. I had the flu. That was my story. Then, it dawned on me. I had released hundreds of these into the wild. They had hid and retreated, and there were countless now out on the prowl for their next victim. Victims who were asleep like I was. Victims who didn't know they existed. Victims who might wake up with a sore throat and call it a cold. Victims who could carry on with their lives until they find themselves giving birth to a hundred spiders in front of a mirror. I had done nothing to try and contain this. So I put my two weeks in. I'm not a virologist. A virologist would have tried to stop them from entering the world. I was too weak, too horrified. As a result, I have caused an outbreak of a new parasitic species. Mary was devastated when I told her I quit. I told her I couldn't explain my decision. I didn't want to burden her with the knowledge of what she did to me. I wished her well on her research. She told me she would keep in touch, but I wasn't sure I would uphold my end. I drove home thinking about what had happened. I knew I needed to tell others, so I made this post. I packed my things and will be moving to a colder climate. And to this, I can only give a strict warning. If you see a blood red spider crawling in your house, kill it immediately. If you show symptoms of flu-like disease, get tested. Make sure it really is viral. And if you ever find yourself in the situation I did, where you become the breeding ground of these abominations, plug your nose, aim for the toilet, and just get it over with as fast as you can. It's easier that way. I just hope they don't infest the same person twice. That was, I fell asleep at work. That was a huge mistake. I hope you all have enjoyed this story. Again, if you did, please leave a like. I hope you all have had a great day, and good night.